G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an M203 grenade launcher. This weapon came about in real life around the 1970s during the Vietnam War. You see, the Americans were thinking to themselves, how can we make our grenadiers better? Because they're carrying around these M79 grenade launchers right now, and they can't be carrying rifles around with them. That's way too much. And if you're, if you're familiar with Fallout 76, the single-shot grenade launcher, M79. So, yeah, that was a thing they had to carry around. So what they did is they decided to improve upon the concept of grenade launchers. And a couple of companies tried, Colt tried, they didn't make it. But another company, I believe they were called Atlas or something, they made this M203. And you can mount it onto the bottom of your rifle. So therefore, the grenadiers in your squad now can have rifles just with the grenades slung on the bottom. That's pretty cool. But this concept is not really a thing here because what you're looking at is like a full standalone version. They've added a trigger and a pistol grip and a stock onto the M203 here. I feel like that's kind of defeating the purpose. Maybe this thing's slightly less cumbersome than an M79. It's certainly a lot smaller. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird how it is. I'd much rather this mounted on the bottom of an M4 or something. But... It's a standalone grenade launcher weapon. These are usually fun, so we'll get started with the attachments. You'll have a custom reload animation, custom sounds with this thing as well. Should be mentioned. Now for the receivers, we've got the standard run right now. You'll actually find calibrated receivers in here too. And an advanced receiver gives us the best damage with 810, which I think is what we're going to do because, yeah, it's actually a lot of damage. Now, we are playing on very hard difficulty, which will give us a 50% damage penalty, but still, 810 is going to be massive when it comes to shooting things. Legendary effect is there if you want it. We will not be using that for consistency. And you can change the grip. Just customization for the sake of customization. I'm going to throw the SIG one on there. Yes, that one. And the sight right now is just the leaf at the top. It's just this flip-up sight, which uh, is always in the up position. It doesn't actually um, angle the weapon or anything when you aim down sights. It's just like standard iron sights here. And you can chuck on a bunch of reflex sights. You might be thinking, why would you want to do that when the weapon's going to arc? Well, you can use this thing in VATS, and generally reflex sights makes it slightly more VATS efficient. So the idea is yours. And there's also a six-time scope, which says... For when all sense has left you and requires idiot savant rank three that's a funny joke i like that and i don't like it enough to equip a scope onto this because i'm not that mad but i like how it gives you the option i'm thinking one of these raised sites will do us pretty well so we'll go for that one trijicon that they're the same company that makes those acog scopes so this should be all right and you can change the stock or remove the stock if you want. I have the, like the buffer tube thingy that you see on the AR-15s. Bunch of exceptional recoil and stuff. More action point cost. Probably not the best to grab one of these. Although, for some reason, all of them are like a hem heavy emphasis on recoil. But we're firing one round and we're reloading anyway. So, by the time we've reloaded the recoil is sort of reset so i don't really know why that would be a thing maybe what they could do is make these stocks affect the weapon in more ways than just reducing the recoil as you can tell they've done it here this has more action point cost and heavier so that's no good there's one with less action point cost it's the uh, just the standard tube that's probably the way to go so uh it looks uncomfortable but you can also completely remove it to make it super compact looks like a grenade launcher pistol now just a very front heavy looking thing let's go with a viper why not we'll throw something tactical on there to go with it and it gets a little bit more interesting when it comes to the grenades right now we've got the impact explosive self-explanatory it hit something it explodes right away you can have a time fuse so perhaps you want to lob this over a thing then three seconds later after you fire it it will explode and there's a five second fuse. Generally, I like to use these things with just the impacts because you can just bounce them around corners if you need anyway. But maybe we might get a time fuse thing going on just to see what that's all about. We've also got high explosive incendiary. So it probably goes off a little bit like a Molotov, a little bit of fire damage over time in exchange for a damage with the explosion. The shape charge looks fun because we're getting 2100 damage out of this. Um, less explosive radius, but we've got Demo Expert rank 4, so our radius would be increased compared to what this thing would be like unspec anyway, as well as damage, very important. But the shape charge, I think, is an exceptionally uh, interesting choice here. 
And we've also got tear gas, which is non-lethal. No, we want to actually kill stuff because if we don't, we'll get killed. Get a sticky explosive so it sticks onto a surface and four seconds after firing it will detonate. Potentially useful for setting up traps, maybe. There's, they're there. I really can't see the tactical benefit. And as you can tell, as I'm going through these, the gun nut rank gets a little bit higher. Also, there's a high velocity impact explosive, which is probably what you want your go to one to be if you have gun nut rank 2, just so you can get a little bit more range out of your thing. And then you've got a makeshift frag explosive, which detonates two seconds and severe bleeding due to shrapnel, probably using some sort of legendary effect. Note that changing these ammo types does not actually change the ammo type you are using here. And we'll get to how to get that in a second. A signal flare, artillery, or illuminated dark area. That's cool. We've got flashlights though, so may not use that. Anti-personnel buckshot, which actually sounds awesome. 24 grain buckshot, yes. So if we were to use that, and then the explosive legendary effect, we'll have ourselves an incredibly 40, <laughs> incredibly powerful 40 mil explosive buckshot. I kind of want that. And we've also got a Merv cluster grenade, so a bunch of grenades going off, big explosion, just blanket an area, and a solid slug, a 40 millimeter slug. Really? Really? 40 mil? That's a big slug. And then we've got a rubber bullet, which is more non-lethal stuff, and can stun anyone without sufficient protection. How about we just neutralize them instead of stunning them? Yes, that's a good idea. And a proximity mine, ah, better for laying traps. That might actually be a little bit more interesting. And a makeshift dirty bomb adds radiation damage, not too much, and diffuses in the air after time. So it probably will leave behind a bit of a uh, area of effect of radiation only useful against uh enemies that are susceptible to that so other humans and pulse for shooting grenades at robots and stuff target seeking micro javelin which i'm guessing with this description shells midair to come down on a marked target used outdoors probably just a sentry bot um repurposed explosive thing so if you fire that on too low of an angle they'll all explode under your feet killing you instantly not fun and we've got armor piercing flashes, which is like a 40 millimeter dart, I guess. I used one of those in Battlefield once. Anyways, we can change the paint on this. It's subtle, but it's there. Let's go with mm, digital. Is that digital? It's subtle, but it, it is digital. Maybe it's a little bit weathered on the thing there. And that's about it for this thing. We'll have to create a couple more of these bad boys because I need. I want to show off a bunch of rounds for this thing. Alright, so getting this thing is easy enough on a workbench. All you need to do is find the weapons M203 on a chemistry station. And then you can craft the grenades for asbestos, copper, lead, and steel. Uh, just one copper, the rest is two components of. And you can get the M203 grenade launchers here for a bunch more materials listed here. Can you read them? Good. And we've also got gun nut rank 2 as a requirement. So we're going to make a few more of these. And maybe some more grenades. Prepare your best spamming clicky fingers because you're only crafting these one at a time. It'd be cool if there was like a more bulk craft with a, a slightly less um, maybe material cost on buying bulk things. Alright, as you can tell, I made quite a lot of these things all named their respective ammo types just so I could keep track of them easy. Oh, look! There's the Merv cluster. It's got little grenades in it. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice touch. And, yep, so I'm just going to go through them. So, yep, all the way from armor piercing flechettes to solid slugs. There's a couple we've missed out on, but I don't think they're that interesting. So, we'll leave it at that. So, before I actually get into shooting stuff, I'm going to show you where to find the unique variants. Also, I'm going to put Ayla on a thing so I can get an artillery strike going. Okay, the first one is in the museum of, like, the Freedom Museum or something. And you'll find it just literally around the corner where you start. It's gold one called Saint Attila, which I guess could be a reference to the metal band I know. I got another thing to show you as well. It would seem that a lot of weapon mods love putting guns, in this case, in the Museum of Freedom. Yeah, I've got three different rifles in there, including this one. No one likes British peoples, but this one's alright. It's an MCX. It 
I don't know what that's all about. Um, we've already did that one, though. Yeah, um, it's kind of weird. Like, the Museum of Freedom is like Doc Mitchell's house of, uh, getting mod items. Only this one won't turn you into a femboy. Okay, next one is in even yet more of a familiar spot. We're in the railroad base again, and look! Look, I, look, I said that there'd be funny if there was like a fourth one here to complete the circle, but there it is. You, you couldn't make this shit up. Le Homme Replique. It means, I don't know, a replicated homie. It's, it's a good friend. I'm gonna steal this coffee cup again. Alrighto, we're all set up here, wait for my signal, and then drop a big bomb on them, or several. Do what you like, really. Okay, so here we are outside of Immersive Gunners Plaza. We will be starting here today, and we'll be starting off with firing the artillery shell launcher, because I want to have them be raining down explosive, as I'm raining down explosive by myself. So that's what the M203 looks like in first person. When you draw and sheathe the weapon, you'll actually engage and uh, disable the safety. So how cool is that? There's some nice attention to detail. In third person, it's really quite small looking. It is a very small device, very compact. And if you've got the right one, I think one of these is without the grip and without a gigantic scope. It almost looks like it's a concealable holdout weapon. You can bring it into a casino. Probably don't do that though. Anyways, we'll get started. We'll grab the signal flare. And since there's way too many weapons to have on my hotkeys thing, um, I'll just have to go to the pit boy to change weapons, but... That way you'll know, and I'll know, which one I'm actually using. So, we'll lob one of these over here. That's going to get us into caution, but that's right in the center there. So, if they want to investigate that, then we're going to have a good time here. That should be coming in in a second. Let's go with just the standard right now. High impact, high velocity. Any second now. Any moment. You on Smoker, or what? Wait for it. Here we go. Oh boy, make it rain. Look at that. 3,000 XP in one shot. We're going to have Ayla clear out all of the bloody gunners here for me. And there's a cheeky little level up there. Let's get started. And there's one kill. And that fast... Look at that fast reload. Look at that. That's brilliant. So, we're going to be crushing these gunners pretty easily. Also, um, with Scrounger rank 4, you get a chance to get your ammo back if you expend the whole magazine. This thing's only got a magazine of 1, so you got a good chance of not consuming ammo whatsoever. Let's go over to the Merv Cluster, shall we? A little bit of a delay here, potentially at, uh, bad for us if we're being charged at, but if we bounce it just before them, it doesn't really spread the explosives around. It's sort of a bunch of explosives pa uh, packed tightly together, so I'm not really feeling this one off the bat. We'll have a little bit more of a play with it here. Pop in some nades here. Yeah, it's just a really, uh, I guess, delayed explosive. Not really that much I can say about it, so I guess we'll move on. There's a cheeky little lob there, though. That got right where it needed to be exploded on his face. Let's go with the proximity mine. We'll try to... Actually, maybe we'll save this for later. We'll save it for the inside, I think. Uh, we've got shape charge, which might kill guys in one shot. We'll have to see how we go. Um... I'll put one there. That killed something. Yeah, I think you can tell that the explosion's a lot smaller, but that the power that you get out of it is significantly higher. If I hit this guy, I missed! Is there a safety feature here that doesn't allow me to kill myself if I explode it too close? Doesn't look like it. Maybe that was just random spread. I don't think there's any aim punch here. Okay, so we'll do a door breach, I guess. Solid slug. I do want to try that out. But maybe we'll line the door with proxy mines, right? Now, is that attached into there or what? Oh, I think I saw it for a second. I don't know. We'll try to draw them out. If I can get this bloody thing open. Nice. Oh, they're already dead. 
I killed them somehow. I don't know, maybe the shockwave killed them. Well, there's the uh, proximity mine. Could be used to great effect if you just use it like a regular old grenade launcher. They're sort of pinned behind that there thing now. So that's good. Uh, we'll go with the shotgun variant of this. Now, the spread on this thing might suck a little bit and cause us to not get a whole lot of damage over range. So maybe want to use this thing up real close and personal. But compared to the other ones that I've had, this one seems to be fairly underwhelming. We will get nice and close just to see how it goes. That's better. What, 140 in the head with how many pallets? It's 40 there. We're a little bit outranged here, I think. Okay, not really keen on the armor piercing flechettes here, but we'll persevere. Let's finish this guy off with the micro javelin. Now, I want to try something here. So that's a lock on. We've got to fire this in the air and. Um. Oh, okay. So it's not like the sentry but uh, bomb launchers that they kind of home, but they don't. It's kind of hard to gauge what we're doing here. Look, the artillery shells cleared out most of them, so I couldn't get a really good field test on a lot of these. So we will remain outside just so we don't blow ourselves up. But I do want to try one thing. We'll pop inside for a second. Righto, we'll start off with the proximity mine variant of this, and we'll fire a couple of them there mines in this direction, because I know for a fact that those gunners will be walking there, and now we wait. Are you going to pop out? They should go on patrol in a second, or maybe they won't. So it's like firing remote mines, basically. It, it can be amusing, but sometimes it's better just to shoot them. We actually managed to get a sneak attack critical there. Weird, right? And there he goes. He triggered, like, the tons of mines. Also, I'm in nerd rage. What fun. Now, I want to use the buckshot explosive here. It's going to be a little bit, um, over-exaggerated because currently I'm in nerd rage, but... Uh, I've got the legendary effect on this with the um, 40 mil buckshot, and since it turns all of the bullets into explosive bullets, you can get a ton of damage, uh, quite a lot, uh, the big, big amount. So we'll roam around with this for a few more kills, I guess. Gonna conscript, you can do better than that game. There we go. Looks like they can survive it, won't be one-shotting everything, but... I guess this is one of the best ways to run the thing. Not super intentional, I'm guessing, but does the job. Let's move on to Le Homme Replique, or something like that. I don't speak French. Okay, the game crashed. I noticed this um, when using uh, like railway weapons with the shotguns. It sometimes causes crashes, so we'll reload and try to do this again. Okay, we've time warped back, and we're not going to mess around with mines. I'm going to see if I can use this thing without it crashing. That's another crash. You know what? That's a write-off. I'm going to take this as a sign. Okay, so we're outside again, and we're going to fight some more gunners. And I've got the solid slug installed. Oh, okay. I like it when slugs aren't hit scan because it makes them feel slightly more impactful. And this thing doesn't make the game crash, which is good. A little bit of leading needs to be done here. But these are all little baby gunners, so... Hey, you can't do that. You get a critical, my man. There's the railroad animation in third person. Couldn't make it any clearer than that. Yay, there's 2100 damage. That's what you want. Also, there's a bash animation, which we didn't get to. You, you grab a knife and you stab. You, you downward thrust like that. Isn't that nice? Baby gunner. Great use of cover. I'm gonna shoot you in the bum. Ha! Anyways, uh, Swan's half cousin should be around somewhere. I think he, I mean, he's super mutants got dragged off in that direction. Uh, we'll come back to them later. Oh, wait, there he is. 
All right. Uh, he'll deal with the raiders then. We've got some other super mutants to kill. Now I want to use the gold one. So Saint Attila. They, Attila made a good song that um, used to play at work for the memes called Pizza. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good shit. Good, good song. Like it. Look it up. So we'll have to figure out what this thing does. Um, apart from nothing. What, what am I doing here? What exactly am I doing? Oh! Oh? Is it just... Does it not fling out at all? Oh, wait. There it is, right there. We seem to have grenade problems. Wait. It's it's there. It's, it's right there. Um, maybe we've got faulty ammunition. <laughs> I guess this is... Oh, wait, there he goes. What? Alright. 95% chance. And... Stab. Downward thrust. You, you get that combat knife. Okay. Here's a thing that I should probably mention. Wait a second. Um... If you've bashed and you get interrupted, you see I've got the knife in my hand. You can't switch to third person or anything. Just bash again, it goes away. Easy as that. So, uh, I don't know what's going on with the gold one, so I'm going to leave that. Let's go back to... You know what? I'm going to get a signal flare here. I'm This fellow with the minigun, he's causing lots of radial blur, and that'll never do. I don't know if the artillery has reloaded yet, but if it is then that's nice i'm gonna try to get more out of the micro javelin here so fire it up in the sky they said maybe like that high yes just a little bit above them think of it as like one of those air burst grenade launches that the support class gets and then quickly forgets about in battlefield 4 yes that'll do um plenty of super mutants around you you might want to kill something, Kylie. Yeah? Nah? Alright. Okay. Not good. Don't use that one. That one's NFG. Let's go back to High Explosive Incendiary. Have I shown off this one? There's a little bit of a delay, but as you can tell, plenty of fire to go around. And it packs the punch where you need to. Oh, we can see a nice shockwave on the explosion. Watch it. Look at that. Nice little blurry shockwave. I don't think that'd be that slow in real life, but it's there for, I guess, showing you what it's like. I want to go back to just the basic, the standard, the high explosive incendiary stuff. We'll get to the uh, shaped charge in a second, but I think on balance, this is the most consistent. Oh, it ricochets? It ricocheted off that man. Twice. Thrice even. You're getting the critical treatment. How are you grenade proof? There we go. Alright. Is it because he's too soft? Oh, maybe. Maybe there's some like really cool ballistic stuff going on here that I don't quite know about. But I like how it's unpredictable, you know? Everything's not so quite as cut and dry as other game grenade launches that explode an impact no matter what you hit. That's so weird. That's so cool. I love that. Anyways, we'll go over to the shape charge once again because big giant mutant needs a killing and I kind of want the biggest amount of damage possible. So we'll try to do that. Alright. Got to aim a little bit up and preferably hit the target. Oh no, is he too soft as well? You'd think he'd be bloody hard because, and not that way. He'd be solid because he's covered in bloody muscle. Look at the, look at the size of him. But we did spam these grenades, so I guess we're doing okay here. We might have to like, that went right in his gob. How do he survive that? Ow. Well, that's nerd rage again, so I might just like put him on the ground. Try to trip him over. Stub his toe with 40 mil shape charge grenades. All right, back off, back off. We're going to get out of um, time zoom slowdown in a second. Ah! Got wrecked. 
Okay, so uh, we're gonna try this again, but instead of fighting literally everything, I'm just gonna get rid of these gunners and then move straight on to the muties, like that one. Here goes down. We're using just the basic standard ones here, nothing too fancy about them. Look at that shockwave. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Keep going. Don't stop. Might use a shape charge against these guys because they're a little bit tougher. Now, I'm, I'm wondering whether the discrepancy between, um, like, hitting them on the floor and then, like, at close range. Is it bouncing off them because close range and safety features, right? Is that the thing? Because that one bounced. That one also did. But you hit him on the ground, so I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't detonate on soft targets. Don't really know what the meaning of that all is, but... It is what it is. See, this guy's super far away. I'm gonna shoot him in the leg just to see if we can do it. That's way off. That's also way off. Come on, concentrated fire. All right, that's right on his beauty thing. All right, that's that's not super helpful. I guess the only thing we can do at this point is, well, firstly shoot that one because he's still alive. Well. This is all a little bit of a pickle, isn't it? So, it looks like we can't even hit him if we tried. So, what I might do... That one worked. I think it exploded on the ground, though. I'm going to try this. And, uh, feel free to crit him. Yes, that's nice. Before you do that again. Oh, that's a knockdown. Really? It must be a scope. It is indeed a scope. Okay. Now that he's on the ground, does that make him susceptible to being attacked by this? We've got a very poor chance of hitting this, but we'll try it anyway. Like, it shouldn't be landing too far from him, right? There we go. He's mutated. Well, I guess that's the way to go. It's kind of weird for a weapon that I would rate and use in bats a lot to be so impotent and just not that great. Just soaks it all up. Talk about a grenade sponge of all things. I suppose the best way to do this is just to stand where he can't get me, because can't figure out how to get through that. I just keep shooting him like this. Eventually, the splash damage, will, he will succumb to it. Or rather, we can get him flying. Uh, go for a crit here. See how we go. Do I have multiple crits lined up, or am I going to jump? I'm going to jump. That's okay. There we go. Alright, I don't think I want to fight any more monsters, considering that we can't hit them directly to do a lot of damage. Did that happen with the gunners? I guess I didn't notice it, because just, I'm just i just not that accurate, but against those bigger targets where they are super easy to hit, I, that might cause issues. So there you have it. That there was the M203 grenade launcher. Again, kind of weird to have it, like, as its own weapon with a pistol grip and stock on the back. But it it's cool. Um, and a, a thing about this mod, since it always uses the same things, then there's no way to change over the receivers. At least, I don't know what I think there is, but for, for testing purposes, it serves its purpose. But um, there aren't any, like, different web ammo types that you can switch from, like the RPG. So I guess in that way, it does feel kind of dated. Unless you want, unless like the modder's vision was that you have to commit to a certain grenade to use between workbench days, but it's not like workbenches of the weapons variety can be too far away all the time. You see, because you can just make settlements and have them all there. Bit of sniping for ya. Bit of M203 sniping. So yeah, if you'd like to see this thing in your game, check out the link in the description. It shall be there. Can wear it with uh classic holstered weapons too very very nice would highly recommend this thing i actually had a ton of fun with it a little it's a little bit quirky and a little bit funky in some areas a little bit rough around the edges and doesn't really explain its functionality but maybe it's more realistic and maybe you like it with the gameplay flaws that it presents with its i guess realism or maybe it's just bugs who even knows thank you very much for watching guys